such things are done in whom his world rejoices who from a mother's arms but led us all away with countless gifts of love and still I'm taking a scripture reading, reading from the second book of Samuel, chapter 7. And I will read only the first three verses. Second Samuel, chapter 7, from verse 1 to 3. After the king was settled in the palace and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan, the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. Beloved, this is the word of God. Let us pray. Father, we're thankful as we come before your throne once again this morning, thanking you for all the good things that you have done and continue to do for us. We thank you for life. We thank you for good health and for all the other blessings of this world that you continue to grant us. As we reflect on your word this morning, we pray that your spirit himself will lead us so that we will be touched by your word to respond appropriately this we ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. As we've been told already, this week, perhaps as a way of preparing ourselves for this year's uh, harvest, which the council, together with the members of this church, have agreed should be styled a Thanksgiving harvest. Thanksgiving for so many reasons. We are dealing with the subject of thanksgiving as a way of preparing ourselves towards the harvest, which I think should not only be a one-day event, but should continue throughout our lives and the rest of the year. 
Thanksgiving has been defined in various ways. But perhaps it is very simple to say that it is an expression of our gratitude for blessings or favors received from God. That is how we express it. When we say we want to give thanks to God, we are saying that we want to express our gratitude to God. That has been dealt with in previous sessions of our devotions in the course of the week. And from the very definition that we have, it tells you that thanksgiving are not giving for nothing. You just, you just don't stand up and say, I'm going to give thanks. The moment one says he is going to give thanks, there might be a reason for it, the why we give thanks. And it is very important to consider this because sometimes we are caught in the world where people do things without even thinking about them. And I personally think that it is one of the reasons why we do things sometimes very haphazardly. Because they are not coming from within, just following the crowd. It is very common and simple to listen to a choir or a musical group singing praises, and they will tell you we are going to sing praises to God. And if you dare take time to listen to the content of the songs that they sing, there is nothing praising about it, even though they say they are singing praises. In the same way, praises like thanks follow the same thing. You just can't wake up and say, I'm going to give thanks. There might be a reason why you want to give thanks. So there's always a why for giving thanks. And that tells us that when you want to talk about thanksgiving, a very important factor that you don't have to overlook is that thanksgiving begins from the mind or from the heart. Because you sit down and you think God has done something for you. And in fact, uh, throughout this uh, address, I'm only restricting myself to thanksgiving to God, not thanksgiving to each other, even though they are very similar. The moment you talk about giving thanks to God, it means you, you acknowledge the fact that God has done something for you. What he has done for you might vary from person to person, as individuals, as a church, as a community, sometimes as a nation. And I believe that in our time, if we were to talk about thanksgiving as a nation, and perhaps of the whole world, the first thing many of us will, will say is that let's give thanks to God for delivering us through COVID. Or you don't share that one. And in fact, I'm aware that the uh, uh, Christian leaders in this country are organizing something to give thanks to God because of how he has seen us through COVID and other issues of the, in, the, in the nation. I'm saying that you sit down to think about something. There is something there in your mind or in your heart which you want to give thanks for. These have been handled by my predecessors and uh, what I'm about to touch on, which is the theme for our discussion this morning, is how to express, how do we express our thanksgiving? Remember, I have said that you begin to think about it in your mind. And that, that is why the issue about a thankful heart is very critical and necessary. Because it is from there that all the others spring from. And so if the heart is cold and is not aware of what God has done for you, you hear people saying something and you also you follow them. But indeed, if you have sat down to reflect and have seen and acknowledge the fact that God has done so many things for you, as an individual, as a, in your family, as a church, or even as a nation, then whenever you want to give thanks, you have something to give thanks for. And therefore, you do it wholeheartedly. The heart supports it. It is coming from the heart. Jesus Christ has said that it is not the things that enter our body that defile us. And in fact, the most important thing is the heart, the disposition of the heart. That which comes out of the heart is that that defiles us. And in fact, in our worship, worshiping without reason, don't, not understanding why we do the things we do, makes sometimes our worships in, uh, uh, meaningless. They don't make meaning. They're only just uh, displaying something, like the children doing some choreography before God. But when 
something that's coming deep from our heart in acknowledgement to God of certain things that we claim, certain favors we have received from him, a blessing that we have received from him, a kind of deliverance we have received from him, a kind of special thing that God has done for us, then your heart desires to say thank you to God. How do we express it? Perhaps that is the issue that we are handling this morning. How do we express our thanksgiving? Basically, thankfulness in our, in our hearts are expressed with our lips and our lives. Thankfulness to God, the way we express it, we have said it's already there in the mind, in the heart. But how do you express it? Because, you see, uh, it is possible to have somebody with a thankful heart. The person has conceived of certain things that God has done for the person. But it's all in, in the person's heart or, or his mind. And he doesn't express it. Yes, God reads the heart so God will know that this person has a thankful heart. But not with us as human beings. You cannot see or know what you are going through except you yourself express it for us to see. How do we express our thanksgiving to God for all the things that we claim he has done for us? And I, I believe that we, we all only know about very little about the things he does for us. He does more than we can actually conceive. We express our thanksgiving to God, as I've said, basically by our lips and our lives. Uh, our words, the words that we say or speak, and sometimes we express them in song, which are also words, but express in music. We express our thanksgiving to God through our prayer, which is also lip speaking to God. And then I've said our actions. This common hymn that we have just sung this morning from Martin Rinkard. Now thank we all our God, he says, with hearts and hands and voices. That is exactly the same thing that I'm saying. Our thanksgiving are in our hearts, if there are any thanksgiving at all. And the thanksgiving in our heart, the way we make it known, perhaps to the outside, is through our voices, our lips. We sing about it. We pray about it. We talk about it. Sometimes, because of the things that God has done for us, we want even to witness to him, tell people what God has done for us as a way of thanking him. And then our hands, what we do, that is our lives. So that is what the, the basic way or general way by which we express our thanksgiving to God. I've said that having a thankful heart is a good thing. But for us outsiders and human beings, it will be meaningless. We must give expression to what is deep down in our heart for God, for others to see. As a way of testifying, testifying to his, uh, what he has done for us, as a way of thanking him, we must let people know, this is what God has done for me. The moment you begin to talk about it, it's a, you are expressing your appreciation, your gratitude to God for the favors that you have received from him. And so as I've said, by our lips, we pray. And there are so many prayer, prayers in the scriptures that we can cite. Particularly Paul, the apostle, in all his epistles to uh, his recipients, he will always begin with a prayer, I thank God for. At various times, he identifies different things which God has done by which he wants to give thanks. To the Romans, he told them, I thank God for you all the time that I pray. The reason is that your faith is being talked about throughout the whole world. I'm very happy about that, and I want to thank God, and I pray, pray in my prayer, I remember you before God all the time. So we thank God by our list, by, through our prayers. We do that. And just this morning, as I was entering this sanctuary, we were singing that 
famous hymn, Thee will I praise with all my heart. And do add, tell mankind how good you are. I conceive the fact that you have done a lot of uh, good things, and I will want to praise you. And in fact, I here I should associate prayer with praise, because both are acts of worship. It's a res they are a response. Not something we are initiating, but something of which God has done, to which we are responding in appreciation of what he has done for us. Thee will I praise with all my heart and tell all mankind how good you are and all the others that follow. That is one way of expressing our thanksgiving to God by our lips through these forms, prayer, through song, through proclamation of God's uh, uh, goodness and all that we do. Another way in which we express our thanks to God is living a holy life. Living a holy life. That is to say that you think about who God is and what he has done for you and his demands on your life, his expectations of your response. In fact, God desires that all his people will live a holy life, which we find it difficult to, sometimes deliberately, Sometimes, uh, uh, unconsciously, we are unable to do it. But sometimes when something happens and you reflect about it, what God, the kind of interventions you have received from God for a, a particular event or issue, sometimes you tell yourself, as from today, I'm going to try to live a holy life. What for? To show God that I appreciate what he has done for me. I've looked down on his words. I've not taken his commandments seriously. I've not taken his worship and every, the spiritual activities seriously. But I think with what he has done for me, I need to open a new page in my life as a Christian or a believer. And therefore, I'm going to try to live a holy life to God. So our holy lives, just like singing or praying or thanking God in, uh, by way of our lip are all acts of our response. It's an act of worship. I'm responding to God's grace or favors that I have received. But I think we will need to support some of these things with some, some scripture. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 16 and verse 17, Paul says something to, to that effect. And in fact, other, many other references that time will, will not permit us now to cite. In Colossians chapter 3, uh, verses 16 and 17, the Apostle Paul wrote, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, through hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And verse 17 says that, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Perhaps if we were to paraphrase it, I would say that Paul tells the people about what God has done, he has done for us in Christ, the message of Christ. His deliverance message, salvation message, this message. And Paul encourages them to respond with, think about these things, sing psalms of praise to God. And he says, in fact, after singing psalms and praises, uh, that is by way of uh, lips, he goes on to say that, and whatever you do, whatever th uh, thing that you do, he says, do all these, whether it is the kind of work and action a deed you are performing, or whether it is a speech that you are uh, giving, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And says, as you do this all in the name of Jesus, you are by that giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. So our lives, what we do, whatever we do, are also can also be a uh, a way of responding to God to say, thank you for what you have done for me. That is a response, a 
an act of worship, which we gave to God for the blessings and the favors that we received from him from time to time. So living a holy life is not something that we are able to do ourselves. But when we are touched by the hand of God and we want to respond, sometimes we commit ourselves to doing the best that we can with the support of God to live a holy life. And when people see our lives, it is an offering to God. We are saying God has made us who we are. And that is my way of saying thank you, God. I'm going to follow you the rest of my life. It calls for commitment. The desire to do God's will and the willingness to do it becomes intense when we appreciate what God has done for us. And so that is another way by which we express our thanks to God, the life that we live, a holy life. In fact, one cannot say that he is giving thanks to God while he's actually opposed to God in almost everything. He blasphemes. He does everything that God says shouldn't be done. And you say, I'm giving thanks to God. You yourself know that that is not acceptable. But anybody who desires to live uh, a holy life desires to please God. It is his will. He desires to do that. It might not be easy. It is difficult sometimes. Or shall I say at all times, except with the support of the Holy Spirit. But... Because of what you have received from God, you desire, you have that urgent, that strong, intense desire to please God. And that is this. your way of saying, I thank you, God, for what you have done for me. The other thing, perhaps the, 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 the last one I will say for, for today, about how we express our thanksgiving to God is given. Given, given something of substance to God because of what he has done for us. In actual fact, we should not perceive giving or offering as something that we are doing for God. Psalm 50 talks about it very well. Sometimes you give a little and you think you have done a favor to God, therefore God should respond to you in a particular way. Hmm. What does God need? Does he need anything at all? If he's looking for cash, do we have cash? I always refer people to the, if God is looking for riches, gold, the gold at Obuase, whose who's is it? Wherever they can find them. I hope you know that I'm returning from leave. I've gone to the Galamse place and back. But I tell you, God has blessed us with quite a lot of resources which we are abusing, either in the exploitation or other things. They all belong to God. And so if you give money to God, are you doing God any favor? Psalm 50 will tell you that it is your, your sacrifice of thanksgiving. You are rather saying by what you give to God, God, thank you for what you have given us or what you have given me. Unfortunately, it is the one subject that we will discuss and debate and disagree and agree on so many issues when it comes to giving. But the fact remains that if, if the heart of somebody is touched by God and the person responds by way of giving as a way of giving thanks to God, the kind of arguments that we, we, uh, we make from time to time, they don't even come in at all. For some of us as Christians, we will want to believe that all acts of giving must be done from a free will. Which is a good thing. You must not be forced. The scripture supports it. But the fact is that if somebody perceives that God has done something great for God and want to reciprocate or respond to God the, the way he even if there are levies by a, the community or the church, the person, even though he is a free agent, but because of his desire, his love for the God, the burning zeal to do something to as it were, show his approval of what God has done, even prepared to pay all the levies. So the quarrel about should we pay tithe or should we not pay and that kind of, they never come in at all. When the heart is touched, I had one of uh, the ministers who, who was uh, involved in our, in, our, in our nature as young ministers, he used to say, that, I don't know where he got it from, but he says, touch the heart and 
sometimes the pockets will flow. When we, our hearts are touched by God, when we sit down and reflect and we acknowledge the fact that God has done something useful, beneficial for us, the pocket flows, whether there are levies or whether they are free will or brains, whether they were spontaneous or they were planned or whatever it is. You are always ready. Because of what God has done, you are prepared to say thank you with your riches, whatever you have. So this argument that we hold from time to time, should we pay tithes, should we not do this, this is Old Testament, this is, they don't come in at all. It's a matter of personal kind of thing that if your heart is truly touched by God, if you have a thankful heart, you do it. Just as we live in our own country, if you are a good citizen, you are patriotic, you pay your, you pay your taxes to the state. But sometimes for some, uh, the tax people will have to chase you because you are not willing to do that. God might not chase us the way that the state will do. But the fact remains that it is an indicator to tell us how we love God. Our willingness, our desire to give to God or any God project because of what he has done for us. It is one sure way by which we always show that we want to give thanks to God for what he has given for us. There is this hymn that uh, Rabbi Stam will not permit us to sing. I will read it, but, but, but rightly we will sing before we close. MHB 579. Let me go through briefly with you. It says, Savior, thy, the dying love thou givest me, nor should I with ought withhold my Lord from thee. In love, my soul would bow. You see, even, even uh, uh, as a responding to God for what he has done for us, your dying love that he has done for us, even one of the actions that we respond in devotion, worship. In love, my soul will bow. Thinking about what you have done for me, my soul will bow. My heart fulfill its vow. My heart will fulfill every vow that it has vowed before you, some offering bring thee now something for thee. When I think about the things that you have done for me, your dying love, I'll bring some offering. It is a way of responding to God to say, thank you. That is how you express it. That is our methodology. That is how we go about it. The writer of the hymn continues, at the blessed mercy seat, pleading for me, as Jesus interceding for us at God's right hand, and I think about that one. My feeble faith looks up Jesus today. He says, help me the cross to bear. Thy wondrous love declare. Declaring what you have done for me, your wondrous love. Help me to declare it. With you dying for me and you interceding for me at God's right hand. Help me. Give me the grace. Give me the strength to be able to do this. To declare the cross. To bear my cross. Thy wondrous love declare. And then to sing a song. To raise a song or prayer. All these we have cited. Something for thee. Something for thee because you have done something for me. And that is the desire of my heart. That is my innermost intentions that I want to, to, to perform. That is the way I'm, I'm expressing my thanks to you for what I have received from you. The first answer calls us to give a faithful heart, give me a faithful heart likeness today. So that each departing day from now on, henceforth, may see some work of love begun, some need of kindness done, some wandering, some wanderer sought and won something for thee. The fact is that you cannot, you cannot think about the goodness and the kindness of God to us, meditate on it properly, and refuse to do something for God. Not as a favor, but as a response to what he has uh, done for you. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. The closest stanza says, all that I am, all that I am and have, thy gifts so free, in joy, in grief through life, O oh Lord, for thee. And when thy face I seek, my ransomed soul shall be through all eternity something for thee. Giving, offering, 
offering myself, my all, all that I am, I offer because of what you have done for me. That is the way I do it. All that I have, I'm prepared to offer because of what I have seen you do for me. And that is the way uh, by which I express my thanksgiving to God. And that's him tells us step by step various ways in which we express our thanksgiving to God for the blessings that we receive, for the favors that we receive. There are quite a number. But if you sit down and reflect on them briefly, you take note that it is not possible to give thanks to God without reflecting on his mercies and his goodness and his kindness towards you. That is why we can have thankless hearts. And thankless hearts, if you ask them to give something, they are not prepared to give because there is nothing there in the heart. What comes out of it, of our hearts, it, what comes out by way of our, of our thanksgiving is an expression, an overflow of what is in the heart. And so that is the reason why I think that the next stage to be considered uh, another time, the need for developing a thankful heart is very important when it comes to giving to support the work of God as an act of worship. Because if we don't have thankful hearts, if we don't know what he has done for us, then in fact doing that service will be done half-heartedly or haphazardly. And it is my hope and prayer that the Lord himself will help us even as we think through all these things. Together we have our common concerns, things that we can share and say God has done this for us. But perhaps when it comes to the individual level, they are diverse. We have different blessings received from God. Now that it is time for us to come to say thank you to God, giving is just one aspect of it. We, say, we give thanks to God with our lips, our songs, our prayers, our, our, our proclamation of his word, and so forth. And so also do we pray, give thanks to God by the way we live. We offer our whole beings as an offering to God because of God and what he has done for me. I'm not going to live this kind, this kind, of, this kind of life again. And this aspect of giving, of what we have and what we are, it's something that perhaps we will put it to test ourselves as we come to church on Sunday. My hope and prayer is that the Lord himself will help us to reflect even before the time comes. It is not a matter how much you have. That doesn't come to play at all. But how you appreciate what God has done for you and how you value it, that will t tell you what to do. I once preached at a harvest service in one of my pastoral as one of my pastoral duties in one, one, one church, my own church, Methodist church in a particular community. And uh, after the harvest, one man came forward to me and told me, Osofo, when I was coming to church for today's harvest, well, this is the amount of money I took on me. That is what I thought I, I would give. But when I came to church and the service moved on and I listened to the sermon and reflected on the message that you gave, I sent back home to tell my wife you bring more money. Praise the Lord. He had not reflected on God's goodness. He was only coming to give because they said we should all come and give. And he was a rich man. But he had pecked himself at a particular point. They saw that I'm going to give. But thank God he says he was convinced, convicted by the Holy Spirit to, to do better. And I'm saying that it doesn't matter how much you give. It is coming from the heart. If it is coming from the heart, because we are at different levels. The ability to give depends on so many other, things, other factors. But you are an individual before your God. It is time for us to give to show our appreciation for what God has done for us. What has he done for you? Why do you want to give? Or oh, it's, it's an annual ritual. My hope and prayer is that the Lord will touch us as we prepare individually and do the best we can to show our appreciation to God for what he does for us. Let me sum up what I have said throughout this delivery. Methods by which we express our thanksgiving to God. One of them is singing. 
And if you want biblical references, you can quote Psalm 28 and verse 7. And the one I referred to, Colossians chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. And singing sometimes includes adding musical instruments. That is what David did. Sometimes when he was touched, he would do that. Another method by which we give our thanks to God is through our prayers. We have cited Paul. And then also giving of offerings, whether they are free will offerings, whether they, were, they are fixed, whether they are spontaneous, whatever it is. A way of saying thanks to God is how we offer. Give, because we begin to entrust our whole lives on him. Then we do that as an act of worship. It's an act of worship. And then we testify about Jesus Christ as a way of giving thanks to God, what he has done for us. Because of that message, the deliverance message, we testify to others about Jesus Christ. And then we show our thanks to God by living a holy life. Let me now round it up with the passage that I read. You heard me reading about David, the second king of Israel. We are told in scripture that during his time, or even before him, the whole of Israel, even though they have entered the promised land, there were still enemies spread around. They in fact dwelt amongst them in every place. That is how come in the, during the time of Saul, Saul had to fight and fight and fight and at one time, he was so hasty, he, he, he disobeyed God in waiting for his orders. David was chosen as his successor to Saul. And by God's grace, God strengthened David to be able to overcome all his enemies. To the extent that he could not say, we have a unified Israel. Those who are not prepared to live with us, we drive them out. We conquer them. Some of those we conquered agreed to serve us. So they remain with us as servants. So we now have a, a unified Israel. There is now peace in Israel. And so David builds a palace for himself. Very beautiful. These are people who have been moving in tents. Tents. For over, over 40 years. Now he puts up a mansion. In those days of Seder. High profile. And then as David sat down one day in his house, as I read, God has given him rest. All the enemies have been subdued. There is no peace in my country. To the extent that I have been able to put up a mansion for myself as a king. Why is at this same time the God who fought my battles for me? His ark rests somewhere else behind somebody's, somebody's tent. The Holy Spirit convinced uh, convicted David, you are not doing the right thing. And David agreed. So immediately he thought of doing something for God. A response to what God has done. He now realized it. He needed it. So quickly he called Nathan. This is what I'm thinking about. And we heard the, uh, the prophet say, go ahead and do it. Praise the Lord. That is how we give to support God's work by way of saying thank you. David did it. Even though God did not allow David to put up the building, as we all know, just the intent, intention to do it, earned him the blessings of life. Because of what you have done, you want to build a house for me, I would rather build your house. The dynasty is going to remain in your house. Jesus, came, Jesus Christ came as a son of David. All because of this simple, singular act. Intentions to show appreciation to what God has done for us. It is my hope and prayer that even as we also meditate on these things, not only for this year or for now, we should try to cultivate um, a thankful heart so we can respond appropriately as a way of giving thanks to God and receiving his blessings. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We have some prayer topics to go through. Let us begin with giving thanks to God for this opportunity to be before him this morning.
Let us thank him for the lives of ourselves and our families. Even the very idea that we have people called family. Give thanks to God for it. You think it is automatic? It is not. Some people are very lonely with nobody to speak to. You have it in an abundance. Sometimes it becomes even nuisance for you. Give thanks to God for that. Let's give thanks to God for our families. And let us pray to God that he will always remind us to appreciate the gift of family so that we can nurture them and live together to his glory and praise. As a church, by which we are, through which we are nurtured, our faith are nurtured, let us give thanks to God for. Thank God for the church, thank God for Jesus Christ, but for him. Thank God for how far he has brought us throughout this year as a nation. A nation that have survived COVID. Let's thank God. These are sacrifices of praise of our lips to give thanks to God for what he has done. Thank God for our country for the leadership of our country, and for all, in spite of all the shortcomings that we have as human beings. He continues to see us through. And as we do, thank God for our country and for our leaders and our workers. Let us pray for, the ch for, 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 for our country, that God, God will continually visit us with more blessings. More rainfall sometimes, so that our economy will not degenerate, that we'll have food to eat, to have cause to give thanks to him all the time. Let's even thank God for his world, in spite of the dis disobedience, open disobedience to God, bringing in all kinds of things that are not desired by God, LGBTQ. We still live on by God's grace. Let's thank God and pray that he himself will intervene in all these things so that we can dedicate our lives to thank God for the wonderful things that he does for us. Pray for Sunday. That the Spirit of God will fill his people, even as they enter to say thank you with our offerings and gifts. And not only for Sunday, throughout the year and the rest of our lives, that we will continue to live a thankful life to show our appreciation to what God does for us. Now we thank you again, Father, for all the blessings that we continue to receive from you. We thank you for this morning and continue to entrust ourselves into your care. We pray for your protection and guidance throughout this day, wherever we find ourselves. May your spirit protect us spiritually and physically. And all our actions, our, our, our lips will speak about your goodness to others. All at the way of acknowledging your goodness in our lives. We thank you for hearing us in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings, all the protection, all the gifts and graces, all the deliverance, and all the good health that we continue to enjoy. This morning, we appreciate you. We are giving these offerings in appreciation of your good things to us. And as we bring them, we pray that you will sanctify them, accept them, and use them to glorify your name and continue to bless us. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Shall we stand and share in the words of the grace together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
be with us now and forever. And, and surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you.